All right. In addition to increasing the number of stimuli, we also, and it's related, can increase the number of muscle fibers that are responding. So this is increasing the number of motor units um, in order to increase force. What is a motor unit? It is a single um, motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers that it innervates. as a unit so that, that they're contacted, innervated. So this purple motor neuron is connected to the purple muscle fibers. The green one is connected to green ones. There's a purple motor unit and a green motor unit in this picture, not in real life. Are there, those colors don't exist. So this is important for several reasons. Um, one is that it keeps you, it allows you to generate more or less force depending on the situation. And it also prevents fatigue by having multiple un motor units that can actually um, rotate in terms of when they are responding. So motor unit one is kind of orangish. Um, actually, I'm, I'll do red, that, that's pretty much red. So motor unit one, which for, for whatever reason, it's, um, probably smaller, depending on the stimulus, let's just say it's recruited first, it's going to um, generate tension and then stop. This isn't necessarily a twitch. This is the motor unit generating tension and then stopping, um, probably more like some, some tetanus occurred there. Why to stop? Well, it, it got tired, right? So but that's okay because we have motor unit two. When do you think motor unit two might start being recruited to fire? Um, before one is done. So this is an estimate here, but something like that. Then we've got motor unit three. Zoop, zoop. And if this muscle only has three motor units, um, or another reason that maybe other motor units wouldn't be recruited, it goes back to red. So this is a rotating basis of tension generation so that the individual muscle fibers don't get overly fatigued and the muscle is able to generate the same amount of tension overall. So that's what I wanna draw here. I wanna draw the amount of tension um, like at the tendon might be something like maybe like this, kind of have a little bit of bumps there until we're done. So we're done there. So this is tension at the tendon, which would be measuring or indicative of overall pull due to the entire muscle organ. The point here is this is pretty consistent, despite the fact that different motor units are, are working in this situation contributing to that, that generation. So I've already mentioned this idea of recruitment. Um, this is what we talked about in terms of motor units. This is really the other reason that we have different motor units besides the cycling that prevents fatigue um, or, or yeah, we also have um, the ability to increase the amount of force generated depending on how strong the stimulus is. So that's what this visual is gonna, gonna show. We've got a stimulus here with increasing threshold um, voltage. So increasing strength. That's what the voltage is, is the strength of the stimulus. That's not how you spell it, strength though. Um, increasing strength. I'm gonna draw for you here the proportion of nerve fibers that are excited um, and the response of the muscle. Okay, so first of all, we've got the low threshold.
And I feel like this should be, oops, let me do that. It should be muscle fibers. So before below a threshold, we're gonna have no muscle fibers respond because we're below threshold. So down here, it's gonna look like this. There's some amount of threshold of, of stimulus we need to be able to respond. Once we cross threshold, things are gonna start to change. So at that first blip, we might have, um, that first stimulus that meets threshold, we might have a little bit of tension um, here, a little bit bigger, right? So how does that look in terms of our muscle fibers? It's going to look like more in this one than compared to that one. So I'm just gonna draw some dots in here. We are going to start recruiting more motor units. That is what causes this to increase tension generation. And that's just gonna continue, right? So let me go back to, well, okay, this one first. Um, let's add another one in there. I'm just doing them randomly. I'm not trying to um, deliberately plan where I do these. The increased motor unit um, the recruitment is going to increase force generated. This is because of recruitment. As the stimuli continue to increase, there is going to be a maximal, put it right here, this is max force generated, maximum force that this muscle can generate. There's a limit to that, right? So even though the stimulus, stimulus is increasing, um, force, let's see this, this one here is gonna go just a little bit higher. <laughs> Oops, that's not supposed to be higher. These would also be connected, right? So this is in between each tension generation. Here's our max force. So why is that? Because we've recruited all we can. This was my maximum here, right? Yep. So at this point, we've got all neurons on board firing all motor units on board, we cannot recruit anymore because the entire muscle is contracting, generating force. So this here shows recruitment with increasing stimulus strength um, up until a point when all the motor units are, are recruited. So again, motor units um, are useful for preventing fatigue due to that cycling um, and also useful for increasing the amount of force as needed due to recruitment.